In this comic, Franklin Richards absolutely dominates Mephisto. But here's the crazy thing. The ending of this is actually going to bookend to Scarlet Witch. Man, I'm, I'm going to blow your all's minds with the ending of this story. So this whole thing doesn't even start with Mephisto or the Fantastic Four. It actually starts with this woman, basically this old witch, by the name of Elspeth Cromwell. But we're just going to call her Cromwell because honestly, I'll just end up mispronouncing her name all the time. Now, here's the thing to know about this comic is that this kind of comes off the heels of two other comic books, specifically Fantastic Four 240 and Amazing Spider-Man 260. And we'll talk about those as we get through this because those were comics that kind of fed into the power of Franklin, the fact that there was like this hidden power in this kid that nobody really seemed to understand. But the reason why Cromwell is so important here is because what the Fantastic Four had done is they had taken off to Connecticut to try to build kind of normal lives for themselves. Of course, again, this is under the writing and artistry of uh, John Byrne during his legendary Fantastic Four run. What ended up happening is their next door neighbor was just this crazy woman who convinced herself that like these Fantastic Four folks are basically witches because Reed Richards and Susan are using disguises, right? The Fantastic Four are probably the most well-known superhero team on the planet. So they moved in next door. This woman probably wouldn't have bad an eye. But the reality here is she thinks there's something fishy going on with them. And so what ends up happening is Franklin comes downstairs and he tells his mom he needs a glass of water. And she's like, okay. So she ends up taking him upstairs, gets him a little bit of water, that kind of thing. And then she goes to leave. And what she does is she muses to herself, right? She says, I have the strangest feeling something is happening with Franklin. He seemed a little odd the other day when I found him in one of Reed's labs in the Baxter building. Since then, he's been just fine again, but I can't help worrying. There are great and terrible mutant powers locked up in that little boy's skull. Powers that once threatened to lay waste to the whole world. If anything has happened to break down those psychic dampeners, it could mean disaster. Disaster. Now, here's what they're talking about here, right? Let's specifically talk about Fantastic Four 245 for a second. It's the first real time you get to see Franklin Richards' powers on display in Marvel Comics, and it showed you what he was capable of. In Fantastic Four 245, Susan Storm comes home after doing a television thing, only to find out the Fantastic Four have basically just been absolutely dominated. Now, what ends up happening is as she makes her way through there, there's like this adult blonde guy who has no clue what's going on. He's taking out Johnny Storm, right? And then he starts chasing after after Susan. Once the dust settles and it all comes to a head, you learn that it's Franklin. He looks like Jesus, but you learn that it's Franklin. And that what had happened is he was playing with a Rubik's Cube, and there was a TV on in the background, and it said, why don't you just grow up? And because he was frustrated with the Rubik's Cube, he ultimately ended up activating his powers. He turned himself into an adult. And so it was crazy, because that's when the mental blocks were put in his mind by Reed Richards, because they realized that as a child, and with the ability to alter reality on a universal scale, this kid could just wake up one day and alter the fundamental forces of all existence, right? Nobody knew what he was going to do. Now, fast forwarding to Spider-Man 260, that's the instance that Susan is specifically discussing here. Amazing Spider-Man 260 is during the time when Peter learns that the suit is sentient, that it's basically a symbiont. It was being held in the Baxter building of the Fantastic Four. Franklin wandered in there, and then the symbiont actually hypnotized him and then started reading his mind and realized how powerful Franklin was. Now, Susan shows up in the nick of time. She grabs Franklin and they leave. And then we're kind of given this idea that like the symbiote was terrified, that it was glad that Franklin Richards was gone because who knows what Franklin Richards would have done to it had it learned, or at least had he learned what the symbiote was capable of. But what goes on kind of getting back to this main story itself, what ends up happening is Susan Storm is of course preparing for bed and that kind of thing. And then like Reed Richards opens the door to take out the trash and there's this just bright blinding light. And that's where Cromwell shows up basically to confirm front both Reed and Susan, and then accuses them of being demons. More so than that, what we learn is that Cromwell has been dabbling in the dark arts. Now, this is not her first appearance in Marvel Comics, and in her appearances in Marvel, we had learned that she's kind of an anomaly in the sense that she's an individual that can dabble in the black arts, but not be influenced by them. It's a very rare thing for that to happen. Even Doctor Strange has to take care to ensure that he's not corrupted by the dark arts that he occasionally utilizes. More often than 
not, it's somebody screwing with the dark hold of Cthone, right? And like they end up becoming a vessel for Cthone or they're twisted by its magics and ultimately they're destroyed. But for Cromwell, that's not the case. And so she essentially, I wouldn't say defeats the Fantastic Four pretty easily, but she is able to overwhelm them to a degree. And what ends up happening is they try to tell her who they are and she just ignores them, right? She's like, none of that's true, right? She's basically just caught up in her mission as essentially a witch hunter. And so what she does is when Susan Storm creates an invisible barrier around her, she just walks right through, right? Literally, she's like, this is not enough to defeat me. And so what ends up happening is Cromwell realizing that she's dealing with people that have superpowers. She opens a hole in the ground that basically pulls Susan Storm down into what is in effect hell, right? Now, of course, Reed Richards goes down there to try to like save her and demons grab his arm and break it in half, which even by Reed's own acknowledgement makes no sense at all, right? He literally says, my arm, something down there broke it, snapped it like a twig, but that's impossible. I don't have bones. And that's the thing that's cool is because Cromwell responds and she says, nothing is impossible, warlock, not when your own dark forces can be harnessed and turned against you. I have traveled all the world, seen all the blackness, which can corrupt the human soul. And I have learned to shape the darkness and from it, bring forth light, the self same light, which will now destroy all of you. Now, the cool thing is Susan Storm basically re-emerges from all of this. And in response, Cromwell summons what are called the Knights of Hades. But notice what she says. She says, I summon ancient forces, witches. Your own dark kind will stand in final judgment, right? The Knights of Hades emerge. They go to basically attack Reed and Susan. And then Franklin wakes up. Now, in the midst of all this conflict, right? Like a fireball comes flying through the house. It hits Franklin, knocks him into a cabinet. He falls and then he bleeds. And as soon as that happens, all hell breaks loose, quite literally, right? Because Reed tries to appeal to Cromwell and tell her like, look, all this crazy destruction that's being caused here isn't us, it's you. And you failed to realize you don't have control of your own forces anymore. You don't control anything that's here anymore. Like sure, you have these Knights of Hades, but they do what they want, right? These are beings who were condemned to basically this realm of torment and suffering for crimes that are just unmentionable. And so what happens is she realizes, oh my God, right? Because she tries to control these things and realizes she lost control. But that's where Franklin comes out of the house and he says, mommy, daddy, inside the house, there's something there. And that's when Susan says, oh my God, you're bleeding. And that's when Cromwell realizes that's why she lost control. She shed the blood of an innocent. And as soon as that happens, right? She says, no, like it cannot be. This voice comes out of nowhere and says, why not Cromwell? Did you not say you would summon me forth? I am the final punishment, the final doom. It's Mephisto who arrives on the scene. Now, what this does is it also triggers Stephen Strange because Doctor Strange, you know, always dealing with the Mr. R stuff like that. He realizes like something needs to be done here. And so what follows this is like a really weird way that Fantastic Four 277 is done that what John Byrne did is he split it. So up top is a Ben Grimm story. Down below is the story with the Fantastic Four. Stephen Strange shows up here on the scene where all the members of the Fantastic Four are just spread out on what's effectively a tarp. And as far as the normal cops are concerned, these guys are all dead. Stephen Strange knows enough about magic and mysticism to know there's something else going on here. But then he immediately recognizes them as the Fantastic Four and Franklin as well. And so what happens is, of course, basically like Mrs. Chalmers, the old woman who summoned Cromwell in the first place, shows up, starts babbling on about how they got what they deserved and so on and so forth. But she talks about the idea of an exorcism. And that's where Stephen realizes there's magic that's going on here, right? It's not something as clear as the Fantastic Four had been destroyed, right? Switch over to the realm of Mephisto, where Susan Storm is currently being tortured. Now, the cool thing here is that while this happens, Mephisto plays the normal role, right? He says, enough, a moment's respite at least. Even such exquisite agony become endurable if one is allowed to become accustomed to it, i.e., I'm not going to keep this going because eventually you'll get used to the pain and I want to make sure you don't. And so what's really awesome is Reed calls him a monster. And this is kind of how you get this perspective of Mephisto within Marvel, because he says, you would speak thus to Mephisto. You wound me to the quick human. Mephisto is no mere monster. Mephisto is monarch of monsters, the living Lord of evil. Now it's cool, right? Because it's like, you would call me a monster? I mean, come on, man. I'm so much more evil than that. <laughs> Ha 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 ha. 
<laughs> right? And so what happens is Reed is just like, so you claim, but all I see is another petty super being who uses his great powers to torture and kill. Now, this is the cool thing, because for those of you guys who were unfamiliar with the character of Mephisto, even though you may be aware of the concept of him, Mephisto is what's basically a universal construct or a universal constant, simply meaning Mephisto will always exist. And there's a reason for that. And we'll talk about that once we get to the end of this, which again, it's going to blow all of your minds. But he kind of hits on this and he says, poor pathetic mortal, you strive to comprehend Mephisto and in so doing, you seek to reduce him to your level. But Mephisto is not to be thus reduced, Reed Richards. Mephisto is older than humanity, older than time itself. Mephisto is evil. And Reed just kind of chastises him, right? Talking about the idea of him just sort of boasting and all that kind of stuff. And it's literally like, you know, well, if I had my powers and if they hadn't been neutralized, well, we'd give you what for. And the response of Mephisto is like, your powers aren't neutralized. You're just that weak in my realm right? Because one of the things to know about Mephisto is that he is at the most powerful in his own realm. When you remove Mephisto from his own dimension and you put him out into anywhere else in the universe, he's still incredibly powerful. And compared to the level of power that like 99.9% .9 of people have out there, he's way beyond them. But the longer he's away from his realm, the weaker he becomes. Now, even then, Mephisto at his absolute weakest is light years ahead of the most powerful powerful beings on Earth and Marvel, short of reality warpers or mid to high level gods. And that's just more headcanon than anything else. So you don't necessarily have to take that as an absolute. It's Marvel stories shift. But the bigger thing here is he says, nothing and no one functions here, but that I will it. Understand that single searing fact, human. Once you were one of your world's greatest superheroes. Now you are but a toy, the plaything of Mephisto. Now, Susan just kind of like beseeches him, right? You know, she's like, please stop. You know, please don't hurt him anymore. And he's like, of course, right? In any case, it's time I turn my attention back to you because there's so many ways that I can torture you. So many ways for us to have just all kinds of fun. And even Reed says like, you can't do this, right? You're going to kill her. But the response to Mephisto is, no, 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 you misunderstand. You're in my realm. You can't die here because you're already dead. So I can torture you in any number of just limitless ways, basically for eternity, right? Enter Dr. Strange, right? Literally, Stephen Strange essentially comes to their aid. And he says, come now, my old foe. We have met in battle so many times. Surely you recognize me. But here's the kicker, right? The defeat of Mephisto, again, comes by Franklin, but it's not even Dr. Strange who figures it out. While he's battling Mephisto, he's just kind of analyzing everything. And one of the things he realizes is Mephisto is way more powerful than he used to be. Now, there's the answer that's given to us within this comic, and this then there's the answer that I think was actually going on. Now, again, it's all a matter of interpretation, but what Doctor Strange says is this. Mephisto has always been a potent adversary, embodying in his many forms the very soul of human evil. But something, some heretofore unknown force, is flowing through him now, boosting his evil power a thousandfold. Yet I must find a way. And then he sees this crystal over there, right? Like that crystal, something's concealed within it. He casts a spell, and he realizes Franklin Richards inside. But Franklin Richards is just kind of sleeping, right? Essentially resting. And so what happens is that Mephisto loses it, right? Like the instant Doctor Strange realizes that Franklin is in that crystal, Mephisto just goes on a rampage. And Reed Richards, who's witnessing all of this, has this revelation, right? Where he's like, across the cavern of horror, the colossal intellect of the man called Mr. Fantastic instantly assesses the bizarre situation and comes to an equally bizarre conclusion. Mephisto is afraid of Franklin, but why? Franklin has vast, incredibly destructive mutant powers, but they have been under control, locked within Franklin's mind for months now, ever since Fantastic Four 245. Surely they present no threat to Mephisto, unless, and even Reed says, Mephisto is the prince of liars, but even his lies contain a germ of truth. He said we were already dead, palpable, nonsense, but clearly we are not occupying our true physical bodies. The fact that we are in our costumes, not the street clothes we were in when we died, is persuasive enough evidence for these being our mental bodies, right? Our astral forms. Since the mental blocks against Franklin's powers are in his 
physical body, they would not be present in his spirit self. And so literally Franklin Richards is locked away because if he were to wake up, he would immediately realize this is all an illusion and he would defeat Mephisto. Now, Stephen Strange gets the message, right, that Franklin is the one that's the key to all of this and Stephen Strange destroys the crystal which releases Franklin. Now, here's the thing, right? He says, where am I? I remember bad lady attacking mommy and daddy and big red man broke into our house. And where Franklin sees all kinds of disoriented and that kind of stuff, right? Mephisto says, it seems your plan must fail, Reed Richards. Watch then as your child is torn to shreds and does not die. And all Franklin does is start yelling no. And because there are no mental blocks in his mind, it's Franklin with just the full totality of his universe altering powers. He looks at Mephisto and incinerates him on the spot, like one shot, right? Like that's it. Like literally Mephisto is like, your power is great, young one, perhaps even greater than I had feared, but new and greater power flows through my limbs. The world is beset by calamitous evil and the forces of that evil fills me, saturates me. I grow weaker, right? And then like literally all that power starts to siphon off. Mephisto is back to his normal self. And Franklin just says, and now bad man, you're gone too. And just whisk those guys away and like that's it now the kicker to all of this and what seemed to be going on is that the other half of the story is that the dire race had basically shown up the dire race were at one point scrolls who delved into like black magic and so they're kind of like dark sorcerers they intended on attacking earth and destroying earth but here's the weird thing right we don't really know if it's one way or the other because the only real explanation that was given to reed richards in terms of why it is that mephisto had achieved such a high level of power comes from stephen strange and strange says the menace of Mephisto has certainly been expunged. His life essence has been banished from this and all adjacent spirit planes. Literally, Franklin Richards destroyed him. Like he eradicated Mephisto from existence. And he says, but Mephisto did not create the evil in this world. Rather, it was the evil that created Mephisto. He was but a shadow, a reflection of the blackness that crouches in every human soul. Mephisto has been destroyed at last, but so long as evil remains in the heart of men, I fear it will not be long before he is reborn. Born. Now, what does that mean? Well, ladies and gentlemen, as most of you guys know, Scarlet Witch had a couple of kids, Billy and Tommy, and we learned those kids were the pieces of Mephisto. This is how it happens. When Franklin Richards destroyed Mephisto in the story, he shattered him into like pieces. And some of those pieces became Billy and Tommy used by the Scarlet Witch subconsciously. Now, over the course of the either Avengers West Coast or West Coast Avengers comic, that master pandemonium is brought in by what's basically Mephisto so he would reconstitute himself using all the pieces he had reclaimed with the exception of those who were used by Wanda. And that when Master Pandemonium shows up and collects those pieces from Wanda, that's when you learn that her children were never real and they were the shards of Mephisto. They're taken away, Mephisto's restored, Scarlet Witch goes insane, and Agatha Harkness has to wipe her mind, which eventually some, what, like 30, 40 years later, basically kicks off Avengers Disassembled. But with that being said, guys, we're gonna bring this to an end. I thought you guys would dig the connecting dots between like this and Scarlet Witch. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments section. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video <laughs> and I will catch you all later. Peace.